Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to learn how to configure the response generated by the validation pipe. So the validation pipe is going to throw an error if some of the input parameters of the request are considered not valid by applying the class validator decorators to our input model, in this case the course class. So if for example the icon URL property is not a string, then we are going to be throwing a new error that this time around we want to catch and format properly before sending the response back to the front end. For that, the first thing that we're going to need is a new custom validation exception. Here in our filters folder, we are going to create a new file that we are going to call validation.exception.ts. So inside it, we are going to define our new exception. Let's start by defining simply a validation exception class and let's have it extend the existing bad request exception from Nest.js. So this bad request exception is an HTTP exception. Let's now add a constructor to our custom exception. We are going to start by calling the super constructor of bad request exception and we're going to add here a mandatory parameter which we are going to call validation errors. So one instance of a course class or any other model class in our application might have one or more validation errors and let's report them back to the front end as an array of strings. So one string per validation error. All we have to do now is to find a way to throw this exception whenever a validation error occurs. We can do so by going here to our main file and here in the configuration of the validation pipe we are going to specify here a property called exception factory. Now this property is going to receive a function that is going to get triggered whenever a validation error occurs. So the function is going to have here an input argument which is going to be an array of validation errors. What we want to do now is to take the validation errors that were created whenever we were validating an instance of a course, for example, and we want to define a validation exception that contains these errors with a well-formatted error message and we want to return this as the output of the exception factory function. So the validation pipe is going to see that we have produced here a new validation exception and then it's going to throw it. Now we are going to need to catch this exception later on with a filter. Right now let's build the exception. We are going to define here a new property called messages that is going to be derived here from the errors. Let's map each error into a string then. Let's take the error and let's build here a custom string using the template literal syntax. So let's mark first here in our string what is the property to which the error belongs. So let's call here error.property and let's say that this property has the wrong value and let's place in here the wrong value so that we know exactly what we need to change in our front end. Let's add here a comma and here we are going to be adding the complete error message that we got from applying each of the decorators. We can obtain this information by accessing error.constraints. So for one given property we might have several validation issues, for example a value might not be a string and it might not follow a certain format such as for example being an email address. So we are going to take here our multiple error constraints and we are going to join them all in a single string. Let's then apply here object.values. Let's get the values out of the constraints property and let's join all the constraint messages, for example, with a comma. Now that we have created here a properly formatted validation exception and we had the validation pipe throw it, we now just need to catch it and properly format our error response. So for that, as usual, we are going to be creating here a filter. Let's create here a new file that we are going to call validation.filter.ts. So inside it, we are going to be defining our filter. Let's go ahead and define here a class with the validation filter name. And as usual, let's implement here the exception filter interface. This interface has one method, which is the catch method. So here we are going to be receiving a validation exception that we have just defined. And we're going to be using here arguments host in order to produce our HTTP response. Let's start by grabbing here the HTTP context. And with the context, we are also going to grab the HTTP response itself. 
let's now build the response that we want to return so let's return response dot status and we want to use here status 400 bad request we want to send back a json payload let's add here the payload body we're going to add here the status code let's say it's 400 bad request and let's also add the property created by so that we can clearly see where this exception is coming from this is coming from the validation filter let's now add here a new property called validation errors and this is going to contain the exception validation errors array containing all the validation errors that were found now let's annotate this class with the catch decorator and we're going to say that this exception filter should be used for validation exceptions only let's now take the validation filter and let's configure it here in our main method as we have mentioned before the filter configuration order here on use global filters is important it should be from the most generic to the most specific so our validation filter is handling validation exceptions which are subclasses of http exception so it's a more specific filter let's then add it here at the end of our array so with this we are going to make sure that whenever a validation exception gets thrown that it's the validation filter that is going to get triggered and not the exception filter let's now before trying this out complete here the implementation here of the exception factory function so we had defined here the messages property but we did not create our exception let's create here a new validation exception and let's pass it in the constructor the messages containing the multiple validation errors let's now try out our error handling solution here using the restlet client let's submit this payload so let's remember that there are two errors here one in the sequential number field and one in the promotion field let's click send so again we got a 400 bad request but this time around we got here a response created by the validation filter and as we can see here we got two validation errors we have here that the sequential number has a wrong value and the value happens to be error as we have seen here we have here the validation message must be numeric and something similar here for the promo field that must be a boolean value so as you can see everything is working as expected and we are having our input course validated according to the content of this class validator decorators let's now see what would happen if we would switch here the order of the filters so instead of applying here the validation filter at the end let's say that we would apply it here right after the fallback exception filter so if we now try out this new version of our backend we are going to submit the same request we can see that we still got a custom error reply but this time around the http exception filter was triggered and not the validation specific validation filter so as you can see the order of the filters is important we really need to configure them from the most generic to the most specific in the case of our application the validation filter is more specific than the exception filter so it should come after it here on this configuration array and with this we have completed our error handling section now before moving on to more advanced concepts such as authentication authorization guards etc let's take a couple of practice lessons to apply the concepts that we have learned so far we are going to be building a new screen in our application it's going to be the view course screen where we are going to do a couple of extra requests to our backend and along the way we are going to learn a couple of extra features of nest.js we are also going to learn how to create a one-to-many relation in mongoose so this is coming right up in the next few lessons